We begin with breaking news. North Korea has fired another ballistic missile. That's according to the Pentagon, which confirms reports out of South Korea. I want to take us straight to CBS News national security correspondent David Martin at the Pentagon. David, did this catch the Pentagon by surprise? Well, they had been expecting a uh, test. Uh, they were expecting a test of either an uh, intermediate range missile or an intercontinental uh, range missile. It's not known yet which this was. Uh, so they were anticipating a, a test. I think the timing of it caught them uh, by surprise uh, in, in that it came several hours, I think, before they anticipated it. The, it was uh, fired from a, a mobile missile launcher. Uh, outside a, uh, a plant, uh, which is on the western side of the country near the, uh, the capital of Pyongyang. It flew eastward, and now what uh, needs to be determined is uh, the splashdown point. Uh, has it been fired, uh, as the last missile test was, over Japan, uh, out into the Pacific, or will it be uh, fired on a trajectory, a much higher angle trajectory, uh, that brings it down in the Sea of Japan? All that kind of analysis uh, is going on as we speak, and we should know those answers fairly shortly. How do you see this latest launch impacting the current tensions between the U.S. and the North, David? Well, you know, the last uh, test uh, was uh, September 15th, so it's been two and a half months without a test. Uh, there had begun to uh, be people who were thinking that maybe uh, uh, North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un uh, was deciding to uh, uh, cool things for a while because he was getting too much pressure uh, from uh, China, uh, from the sanctions that the uh, United Nations uh, voted. But I think uh, most people uh, uh, thought it was only a matter of time before they tested again. Historically, uh, they uh, test uh, uh, very infrequently in the last quarter of every calendar year. Uh, why that is. Uh, is is a subject for speculation. Maybe the uh, the troops are needed for the harvest. Uh, maybe the weather conditions aren't right. But it's a, an historical fact that they rarely test in that last quarter. So this would be the the uh, the first test in the uh, in the last quarter of the year, and I think it uh, will show that uh, North Korea has not uh, given up uh, one iota on its intention of developing. Uh, an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of reaching the United States. And David, you know, the, what's the Pentagon right now, their greatest concern when it comes to nor the North's missile program? Well, I think it's, uh, uh, one, the, uh, the fact that uh, North Korea is getting very close to having a missile it can count on uh, to uh, deliver a nuclear weapon to the United States. And once that bridge is crossed, then every one of these missile launches becomes a, uh, a mini crisis uh, to see if this is the time uh, that a missile was launched at the United States. Most people think uh, Kim Jong-un would uh, be insane to uh, launch a missile at the United States because uh, the retaliation would uh, almost uh, certainly lead to the end of uh, his regime. But the whole problem with uh, uh, North Korea is that uh, he, as a leader, is uh, is so unpredictable. Yeah, <clears throat> certainly true. Our David Martin coming to us from the Pentagon. David, thank you for your time. Sure thing. And joining me now by phone <laughs> is CBS News radio military analyst Mike Lyons. Mike, thank you for joining us. We just heard David Martin talk about it. They're not sure exactly the trajectory, whether this was an ICBM as well. What's your sense of what you're seeing right now? Yeah, so my reports are showing the missile still in, in the air. It went east. The question is whether it does fall into the Sea of Japan before Japan or into the Pacific. I think uh, I would suspect that this would likely be a, a missile that would go to the Pacific Ocean to show that it's got more capability uh, as the United States monitors every second of what uh, of what he's going to do here. He's, uh, this is likely in response to sanctions that have been put on in the, in the past uh, last quarter, in the past few months. And it does go to show that he continues to improve on this technology. Every time he does, even when they fail, they fall short, whatever the case may be, they learn from them and they try to improve them for the next one. You know, the timing of this is kind of strange. The fact that it came in the middle of the night, David Martin, our uh, national security correspondent there, talking about how it came. Uh, the Pentagon wasn't surprised by this, but it did come a few hours earlier. Is there anything about the timing that you can, well, that strikes you? 
Yeah, it did. And, and the, the Japanese had picked up radio signals. And, and, and right now, that part of the world, we're using uh, all the technology we can to try to predict these when they happen, you know, almost down to the hour, let's say. The Japanese had uh, given out some signals that they felt this was going to happen. Uh, it's just that when they, when they can predict when that launch comes, they just could be more prepared to monitor it. And they're just concerned about where it goes. I mean, the worst possible scenario is, is, the, is the North Koreans miscalculate, make a mistake. They actually hit Japan or the missile track travel south into South Korea or, or further out to Guam or some other U.S. target there. And whether North Korea intended to do that or not is irrelevant because I think our response would be immediate. It would be ferocious. It would be turned on instantly. And we've got, to, we've got to put all those things in place once that missile leaves the launch pad. What do we know about North Korea's nuclear program? Well, we know that it gets better uh, as time has gone on. We know that we believe they has, he has this atomic uh, capability now, which would change the calculus of the accuracy of his missiles. If he has a, just nuclear capability, he'd have to be pretty accurate to hit um, a West Coast city, e even without a space program with satellites to guide that missile in. But with an atomic weapon that, that can be uh, burst over the air, the overpressurization could do a lot more damage, and we just have to, let's say, come close, makes it more of an area fire weapon as opposed to a precision type technology. Uh, it gets better all the time, and the thing that we can't have him do is proliferate it to second and third world countries. That's what North Korea wants out of this. They want to be able to take this technology and sell it to others in the market and level the playing field when it comes to nuclear powers. There's only nine countries in the world that have nuclear capability, and we include North Korea in that, and we shouldn't at some level because they got it you know, really under our noses under the past few administrations. And, Mike, what are you looking for in the hours and days to come post this launch? Our response, what will the Chinese do? I still don't believe the Chinese are going to do much uh, until they feel that North Korea threatens them as well as the Russians. The Chinese have been passive aggressive. They've been talking good game, but frankly, they just don't still uh, have not shut down the North Korean banking. They've not cut off North Korea's capability to wage this kind of test. And I think until the Trump administration has got to ratchet up sanctions possibly against China in order for that to happen. But I just don't believe the Chinese feel uh, that the North Koreans are still a threat to them, and that's why they're just not going to do anything. Mike Lyons, CBS News radio military analyst. Mike, thank you for joining us. Great. Thanks for having me.